レリタリー現状の草一切ひとたび声えす夜間やけども尽きず春風吹いてまた処つ The green grass abundantly flourishes on the plain Each year the plain flourishes in greenery and then withers Fire lit on the grass may burn the plain Yet doesn't annihilate its life. With the breeze of the spring, the life comes back to life. En la lanura, la hierba verde florece abundantemente. Cada año, la florece en verde, y entonces se saca. El fuego encendido sobre la hierba. Puede la quemar, pero no la aniquila. Con la brisa nueva, la vida vuelve viva. This was a poem that I, my, my grandfather really liked, and I kept listening when he quoted a verse, a part of this poem, especially. The part which talks about how the fire which is lit on the grass、um, towards spring, they burn the plain, yet with the new breeze of the spring, life comes back alive. I was asked, invited by the Reverend Mio Zen, Joan Amaral from Zen Center North Shore in Massachusetts. in September 2020, which is just this month, and it was wonderful. She speaks Spanish fluently, and I told her before that I am studying Spanish as well. Not <laughs> my Spanish hasn't been improving,、uh, like, not like the way English improved. And I, I can think of many reasons, excuses. She gave me an opportunity to share. The occasion,、um, Zen Center North Shore, Massachusetts, was celebrating was the beginning of the fall. In Japanese, we call this week season Ohigan. O、oh, is like honorific. Prefix? Higan means、uh, meaning he, with the mi he meaning the other or that. Gan. Means shore. So, higan literally means the other shore, that shore. When we chant Heart Sutra or Hanya Shingyo, towards the end there's a verse in, Sanskrit, in, in, in a Sanskrit term which goes, Gate gate, para gate, parasam gate, bodhisattva. In Japanese it goes, Gate gate, hara gate, haraso gate, bodhisattva. Gun, gun, gun to the other shore, the other shore of enlightenment. This is a particularly the time of the year with a seasonal change. We sort of have often this sort of moments to reflect on our life, reflect on our source, roots. Japanese families go visit their families' graves,、uh, cemeteries. Sometimes they get together. And of course, with the pandemic happening right now, it's not an option for everyone, most people, unless you live together.、Uh, but we still encourage as a Buddhist community to remember their ancestral roots and the roots of your way of life, which For Buddhist practitioners and teachers, as ancestral teachers, all the Buddhas and ancestors. And I shared、uh, with the friends of Mio Zen san or Joan、um, the two things about Soto Zen practice. One is called Doji, another one was Gemon. So I guess here I'd like to sort of share what I, I talked about about the Doji. 
it, which is a very subtle way of practicing Buddhism or Zen. In the Japanese Soto Shu, Soto Zen uh, tradition, Soto Shu school, there are, there's a main tenets and that is called Shishobo. It's a four significant ways to practice Dharma as Bodhisattva. It's a way of Bodhisattva and namely that is giving loving speech, a speech of loving kindness and benefiting others. Giving is uh, Fuse, loving kindness speech, Aigo in Japanese, and benefiting others called uh, Igyo, the practice of benefiting others. And then there's finally the fourth one, which is called Doji. And I was, it's very interesting. Doji literally means the same matter, same Think identical actions is how Reverend Enkyohara of the village Zendo translated, I think, once in one of the, one of the magazines in the tricycle magazines. Right? Um, same matters, identical actions. In the official sutra, sutra, I think it was translated as cooperation. I mean, that's true as well. Doji to me has been a practice which always captured my attention. My curiosity grew stronger as I got to understand what it means to practice Doji. And I, I think it was uh, so personally for me because I pursued the Buddhist practice so, <laughs> in my sort of detours that I, detours that I took in the world of Christianity, both Catholic and Protestant communities, intercultural education for the youth, and also in a local politics and city council, together with working with nonprofit groups. And working now in North America, uh, working for 100 year old Japanese American Buddhist communities, and also more or less like 50 years, half a century old, uh, new, new and old, new and old, <laughs> uh, North American Buddhism. Doji can be said, I think, is like a skillfulness or capacity to embody wisdom, compassion, empathy, not knowing. basically humanity. To practice doji is um, we need to know that we need to sort of identify ourselves with others or in others and then allow others to identify themselves in us, with us or not. It might not happen, it might happen, but that's not the point of do doji. Instantly, one of the teachers, one of the priests in, from esoteric Buddhist tradition was quoting the words from John Keats. I found it very interesting. So that was right around the time I was, I was thinking about sharing doji. John Keats, I mean, if you know poets, po um, poems, you know, you, you might know him quite well. I didn't know about him initially at all. <laughs> so it was a learning. But he was an English romantic a poet. He said, uh, he used the word negative capability, which I found very interesting. By negative capability, um, he said, that is when a man is capable of being in uncertainties, mysteries, doubts, without reaching after fact and reason. And he used the word, this negative capability, and also said it's something like a sense without a sense. It is a true capability with no fixed self or personality. Now here it's starting to sound a little bit more like Zen. 
the true capability is something with no fixed self or no personality. This word was quoted in 1817 when he was discussing Shakespeare's capability, creativity. His Shakespeare's views and opinions haven't appeared or were not imposed on the characters. He dropped, he let go of his own identity and allowed the story to unfold according to the mysterious, uncertain, and unrevealed personality of the characters. And his story allowed people to interpret it according to their own cap capacity, experience, beliefs, age, genders, cultural backgrounds, personal yeah, ex experiences, I guess. And it does sound like a bit like Zen practice, or doesn't it? Myriad stories unfold through myriad functions of the world. Our human nature is, well, let me see, my nature is to conclude an answer according to my particular capacity that I have. This my particular culture that I grew up in, my particular personality, particular personality of a sangha, community, or country. That's the kind of world we live in. How that's how that's how we define the reality. That's how we define what's right and wrong sometimes. And yet the story of Shakespeare is not narrated by Shakespeare. His story can be narrated by the readers only until the reader figures out that the story doesn't need a narration. And that's why people of all different backgrounds get to share the part of the story. And one large suchness in the Buddhist term suchness is free from all narratives this one large suchness we share could be narrated by others according to their religion cultures languages capacity and personality or the whole context of society and yet suchness is free from any of such narratives we use the expression kaishu, literally meaning ocean-like sentient beings, ocean-like beings, to address our sentient beings or all the sangha. And sangha, to me, is, has been always like that. When we take homage to the Buddha, Dharma, and sangha, we're taking homage to this ocean-like sangha, free from the fixed self, the personality. Doji is a practice that is deep and very subtle at the same time. It's been, however, the most influential, inspirational, and in, in practically quite beneficial part of the Zen practice that I've been enjoying um, and been cherishing uh, throughout my Buddhist practice, interfaith dialogue, intercultural education, uh, regional politics, international relationship, interlineage relationships, indiscriminately serving the ocean life being in the West and in the East. To serve the Sangha to me means to serve indiscriminately because with the practice of Doji, there is no self or personality that finds it necessary to stay discriminative. And that's the power of Doji. I'd like to conclude this with message with a text from a certain sutra called Shishogi. English translation is meaning of practice and verification, which was compiled in 1890 with by uh, sort of a very a uh, wise, skillful uh, lay person. Um, but this is sort of a summary of Dogen, Shobo Genza, which came in a huge volume. Now the text referring to this doji goes like this. It is, for example, like the human Tathagata, who 
was the same as other human beings. Self and others are without boundaries. The ocean does not reject any water, and this is the ocean. And it is because of this that water collects and becomes an ocean. So that's the subtle practice of doji. That's the subtle practice of Soto Zen. And there's something else which is more <laughs> concrete that I, I shared, which but I'm not, I'm gonna stop it here. Um, right. Anyway, I hope it's something that you can contemplate on or use as a fruit for your thoughts. All right. Thank you so much for your time. And I, as I promised, I have to keep sharing a bit more messages. So I'll keep working on it. And I hope you're well and staying strong and healthy and staying safe. And that pandemic has been going on. And I guess we're going to see this continue for a while. So if you have any questions, please leave your comment, your co questions, comments. Uh, we do have a practice online. So if you feel like joining us, please feel free to join us. Um, you're more than welcome. We're a small, cozy sangha. Thank you.